welcome to Varanda IAS. Today in Indian Economy Foundation, we are going to analyze the previous year preliminary question paper. In the earlier sessions, I have said, first know your syllabus and get to know your sources and from the sources, you need to study the right part that what you need to study. And you need to identify this part of what to study from the previous year exam question papers. So in this session, we are going to discuss few previous year question paper and I will be saying you how to use the previous year question paper for your studies. Okay. So now let us get into the session. The first year we are going to analyze the previous year question as I said now. So okay. Let us before getting into the first question, let me say how to use the previous year exam question bank. Okay. In the market generally they will be selling. In the veranda also, we are going to give you a question bank of the previous year. So whenever you are studying the previous year, try to put it under various subtopics of the syllabus. Once you classify all the question papers under the various syllabus, so after reading each chapter from your book, just go and solve the previous year paper questions. Okay. And sometimes it is very, very better even before start study, you just see the previous year question. Okay. Like what are the questions are asked, what options they have kept from that particular topic. For instance, you are going to study about agriculture. So what do you do? Before starting agriculture, see the previous year question from prelims or mains like how the questions are asked. Okay. Here particularly, let us speak about the prelims question only. Okay. So just see the prelims question, what are the previous year agriculture questions are asked. Once you see that question, you will get an idea, okay, what are the areas that they are focusing upon. Which area? What I am speaking as an area? For example, if you take a scheme, Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana, okay, it is in skill development. In the scheme, if you see, they might ask like who is the, under which ministry the scheme comes in and they might ask who is the beneficiary of this scheme. So, you should identify in agriculture in a similar way, which area they are focusing upon. So, when you are studying, while you are preparing, again focus on those important areas. Once after finish studying the agriculture topic, you again go to the previous year question bank and keep analyzing whether you are able to answer all those questions or not. Okay. And the first question let us get into. Now I am going to say you what are the various kinds of questions are asked if there is any technique that we can use to solve this question. Okay. So first question is if another global financial crisis happens in the near future, which of the following action or policies are most likely to give some immunity to India? Okay. This question has been asked in prelims 2020. Okay. Here they have asked, these are the options that has been given. So in preliminary examination, the questions can be either A, B, C, D format, that is direct options will be given or they might give some options like this as well. Like you know, uh, two, three statements and you need to choose the correct statement from the above options. Okay. Here they have given three options, okay. not depending on short term foreign borrowings, opening up to more foreign banks and maintaining full capital account convertibility. Okay. So this is how the questions will be asked. Here I want to give you an uh, like why I have chosen this question. Here I have chosen this question because you need to understand the applicability part of the economy. Economy is not like other subjects where you will study some concept and you will be applying like you know you will directly questions will be asked from that fact. Economy is completely an application oriented subject. So if you see they have asked next time if the global crisis happen what step you would take. Okay. So whenever you are studying something in economy it is not just global crisis happened in 2011 or global uh, like crisis happened in 2008. It is you need to learn from the crisis how you are going to tackle it in the next time if the crisis arises. So you need to be futuristic as well while you are studying. Okay. And here for this answer statement 1, I do not want to get into the you know detailing of the subject. Okay. After the sessions are getting over, again we will getting into the detail of the syllabus. So as it is like I am giving introduction, I am not getting into the subjective aspect. Next question is this you see, if you withdraw 1 lakh in cash from your demand deposit account, that is your deposit account at your bank. The immediate effect on aggregate money supply in the economy will be. So here they are asking what will be the money supply. Okay. So first you see it will be reduced by 1 lakh to increase it by 1 lakh or it will be increased by more than 1 lakh or what will happen. They are saying to leave it unchanged. Okay. So a person is going and they are withdrawing 1 lakh and they are coming back and they are having that money as a cash with themselves. So what will be the effect on the money supply is the question asked. Okay. Again, here it is application oriented. 
But why I have chosen this question is, again if you see, for all the questions in the economy, it is not necessary, you need to study something, okay. It is completely a practical and application oriented in life. And this thing happens in everyday life. So, when you are withdrawing some money, also you need to think what happens to that money, isn't it? So, that is why I am saying from the beginning, economy is an integral part of your life. So, you just need to analyze what is happening around you, so that you can answer this question in a simple term. So, if you withdraw the money, what will happen? It will leave it unchanged, because it is there already in the money supply, okay. So, this question is very simple and it is not till necessary that you should have studied some thousand materials, thousand pages to answer this simple question. It is just your observation capacity, which makes you to answer many questions in the preliminary examination. And the next is question 3. This is gold tranche, okay. That is reserve tranche refers to what, okay. This is the question. As I said, there are a lot of questions from the international organization that is asked recently. And this is one such question. If you see the last option, it is a credit system granted by IMF to its members. So, this is how the questions will be asked in international organizations. The questions will be from very basic concepts. See, in uh, UPSC is a generalist exam. So, you no need to go for deeper understanding. You need to have a basic understanding and you should have a wider knowledge. Okay, your knowledge should be very wide. At the same time, you have very few topics you need to have in-depth understanding. That we will be saying in which topic you need to have in-depth understanding. But in case of international organizations, the basics, very, very basics like gold tranche has been asked in the examination. And this I wanted to show you to what depth you need to study. Some people, what they do in the beginning of their examination, if they like, you know, in the beginning of the preparation, if they are giving a uh, heading to them, like about banking, they keep on studying it for one month also, they can study about banking. But you should know where to stop and where to start, okay. This is very, very important. Let's see the next question, that is, with reference to chemical fertilizers in India, consider the following statements, okay. First statement they have given, at present, the retail price of chemical fertilizers is market driven and not administered by the government. And second is ammonia, which is an input of urea, is produced from natural gas. Third is sulfur, which is the raw material for phosphoric acid fertilizer, is a byproduct of oil refineries. Okay. Now they will be giving different options as we know. So now we need to choose the correct answer from this. Okay. As I said, in the UPSC, we are seeing different scenarios right now. And here I want to introduce one more scenario. That is, see. There is some technique called as elimination technique as well. Instead of going and choosing whatever you know, like in this three statement, what statements you know, you can for sure you can say which statement is like it is not correct. You can go with that technique as well. Let us see in application. Here if you see this word not has been used. That is they are trying to say at present the retail price of chemical fertilizer is market driven and not administered by the government. So here they are trying to you know, compare two concepts, isn't it? One, they are trying to check is a chemical fertilizer is market driven or it is administered by the government and here they have used a not, okay. Generally, I am saying a general opinion, it is generally, not 100%, generally means it can be 50% also, 60% also, okay. So, generally when the word not is used, you can be very careful and in case if I do not know anything in the examination, prelims examination, what I would do is, I would eliminate this option and I would go for 2 and 3, okay. In the case, 2 and 3 option also, I do not know whether both are correct, okay. So, only one I am eliminating it. So, based on that, I will be eliminating statement 1 is correct, like this one and this option I can eliminate it. Remaining, I will be having statement 2 and 3 are correct or statement 2 only. Again, in case if you see here, you have already statement 2 is correct, okay. So, statement 2, you already know it is correct. You do not know about statement 3, okay. So, by using this elimination technique, already you have eliminated two options, okay. So, only the next two options is there. So, you are already half successful in completing that, isn't it? So, similar way, there are a lot of techniques. Try to explore the UPSC question paper and find out the tricks and techniques by your experience, okay. And the next is, what is the importance of the term interest coverage ratio of firm in India, okay. This question I wanted to say, see, you do not know the word interest coverage ratio. I am pretty sure we would have, in case if you are not from economics background, we would have never come across this term interest coverage ratio, isn't it? But at the same time, this term is self explanatory, isn't it? So, you see the option. They have given three statements. Okay. Before reading the three statements, let us analyze this term so that we can easily eliminate directly. 
first is interest coverage ratio what it can be something is interest payment we know whenever we get a loan we pay interest interest coverage ratio that is we need to be in a position to pay interest okay so there is something we have interest and we should be in a position to pay the interest coverage ratio okay so we'll be in position to pay the interest for longer term here you see the first option it is it helps in understanding the present risk of a firm that a bank is going to give loan to okay a bank is going to give loan to someone okay. what they will be checking whether the person will be able to repay the money along with the interest isn't it so they will be obviously checking the interest coverage ratio capacity okay just by analyzing this word you can easily answer this question so you will be saying first statement is correct we are checking only probability here we are not going for accuracy okay i am saying we are going for only probability here not for accuracy next is it helps in evaluating the emerging risk of a firm exactly so we will be checking the emerging risk of a firm that is whether firm will be able to pay the interest coverage ratio or not and the third thing is the higher of a borrowing firm's level that is in case if a firm is having a higher borrowing capacity of interest coverage ratio the worse is its ability to serve its debt can it be true it is having high borrowing capacity if it is having high borrowing capacity then what is the meaning it will be able to repay the money back isn't it so the third statement by reading itself you can say it is wrong okay so already you know the answer for this you don't need to study anything isn't it so few questions you can directly uh, you know get the answer just by applying your presence of mind okay and in upsc question paper in prelims part paper 1 i should know one more thing whatever you will be studying here and you are going to examination will not be asked even sometimes something new even only 80% of the question paper will be coming from your known topics 20% will be always new in your question paper for you okay in that time you need to use such kind of a practical application to derive the answer so without knowing what is interest coverage ratio that is without studying this topic you can answer the question okay so next is the chairman of public sector banks are selected by here i wanted to say see economics is an evolving subject so every day and every time you need to be very much updated what is happening here it is completely based on the current affairs and the answer is bank board bureau okay so next question let's see consider the following statements most of india's external debt is owed by governmental entities okay the first statement is most of india's external debt is owed by governmental entities so just have a general perception okay so we need to give some debt to the other countries so who are all players are there in indian economy one is government is there individual is there and private entities are there do you think that after globalization okay this like only government will be responsible for paying most of the debt to other country no it is not at all there isn't it so just by reading and thinking it practically you will be able to eliminate the first option and second you see all of india's external debt is denominated in us dollars okay they are saying all of india's external debt is denominated in us dollars so already i said again you take globalization india is not trading just with one country even if india is denominating its debt do you think that india is going to use only us dollar it is trading with uk it is trading with australia it is trading with china so it is lot of other countries also it is trading with so do you think that second options can be correct no not at all isn't it so you can eliminate it very easily so what is be the answer for this it's the option neither statement 1 nor 2 okay so i am not trying to give you a bogus thing that you know without studying you can clear upsc i am not at all trying to say that here by understanding the subject and trying to apply your mind in the questions you can easily derive answer okay so it's very very simple to clear prelims only in case you have very good observation and you can study the concept and apply it in your paper okay so we have come to the end of the session hope this session is very very helpful to you we'll catch up in the next session thank you